Hello and good morning my friends. This is Dr. Minette Riordan and this is Painting in Your PJs with Minette where we gather live to create in community and talk about things related to visual journaling and using art as process and a powerful tool for self-discovery and personal growth. So I have been a lifelong seeker, deep diver, and asker of curious questions. And one of the things that I love about visual journaling as a practice is the opportunity to explore. Now, this is not a visual journaling piece. I just put this one here because it's pretty. And what we're gonna talk about today is horse magic and the symbolism of the horse. I will be working in my journal today, but I tend to paint very intuitively and I've been sitting a lot with the symbolism of the horse. And so this beauty showed up for me over the weekend. This is what was a fun project for me over the weekend. And this is painted on an old piece of scrap wood that a friend who is a, a woodworker gifted me. And I love painting on wood. I love the surface of it. And I had so much fun last week painting the symbols and using just some of these fun, more sort of doodly styles in my journal that I thought I would continue that practice. I loved that Hamsa, I love the cross. So throughout the month of January, I am here exploring symbols, myths, stories, and archetypes symbols, myth, stories, and archetypes that add meaning to our lives, help us to make decisions, help us unravel and heal old stories. We looked at the Celtic cross, the Hamsa, <clears throat> the lotus flower, and I started off with my symbol of the year, the arrow, the symbol of the year, the arrow. And this week we're gonna be focusing on animals, Definitely horse, definitely owl, and then I'm just staying open in some curiosity about what other animals might want to show up on the page this morning. Good morning, Blanca. As always, thank you for being here. So before I got on the video this morning, I found an image of a horse facing forward, which is what I was feeling drawn to. As always with my personal visual journaling practice, I like to incorporate a lot of ritual. And one of the ways that I start might be drawing an oracle card, lighting a candle. I love starting my pages always by putting my own handwriting onto the pages. Thank you, thank you, Blanca. It's a, it's a fun one for sure. I'm really happy, happy with her. And you know, the, I think the other reason I pulled this over here this morning because oftentimes my art wakes me up in the night or I feel like something's not finished and not quite right and I don't know what direction to go to go next. And she started, good morning, Marion. She started with a really bright red background and I got the horse done and I'm like, it's still not quite right. So I set her aside to rest and I woke up yesterday morning and thought she needs to be pink. She just told me she needed to be pink. And the more that I paint and create, the more in touch I am with that intuitive aspect of my own creative practice. And a lot of times what I'm creating in my visual journal then gets translated to canvas like this one. But today I'm going the other way. So this one got created first and I knew that I wanted to work with some horse magic here in the in the journal today. So I literally went on Google and did a search for horse facing forward, right? Horse facing forward and I found this image of the horse. I did some journaling. I grabbed a couple of my oracle decks and, and did some looking at what is you know, horse symbolism in different cultures. I also really like this little feather, so it's probably gonna end up getting collaged in here at some point. And I did some journaling about what horse means to me and why is horse magic showing up and my connection to animal symbolism overall. So I'm gonna start getting some 
background color down on the page here. And I'm just going to grab this blue because it's literally sitting on the table right in front of me. And last week we talked about symbols that can guide us and speak to us. But ever since I was a kid, I have been deeply connected to animals. There we go. And my parents had kennels and raised German short-haired pointers. When I was growing up, growing up in Texas, my dad hunted. Uh, my mom showed dogs. I showed a dog once. Her name was Star, a beautiful German short-haired pointer, and got a third place ribbon in a dog show. And then at some point when we had moved out to the country and my dad was very much into hunting, we got a horse, a big old retired cow horse named Blackie. Don't even know what kind of horse he was, but he had a big black stripe down his nose and three white stockings, and he was a big boy. And he was like a big dog. He would follow me around without a lead. And if you ask neighbors about me during that time, I could often be seen as a young girl. We're talking first grade, second grade. We lived um, in a neighborhood, but everybody had a couple of acres of land. So, you know, there was a lot of spaciousness and um, I could be seen with my pigtails. That was the last time I ever had long hair. I'm looking for my little Starbucks card that I had sitting here. There it is, buried under my image. Flying around the neighborhood on the back of this giant horse, pigtails flying. And there was so much freedom in that. There was so much freedom in that. And so horses for me have always symbolized freedom even all the way into high school. I was busy, I was in band, and I certainly didn't write in as much, and he was getting older. But always it was a sense of freedom and escape. Um, my parents got divorced when I was in fourth grade, and so there was some chaos in my house, and then mom got remarried, right? You know, so if you think about what animals always meant to me. They were an active, um, such an important part of my life. And this page is curling up here. Um, and I had a cat, I had rabbits, I think I had parakeets at one point. So always surrounded by a lot of animals. And then even once I was in college and in my own apartment, I had cats once, uh, I graduated from grad school, I got a dog. So animals have always been Im important and I love being surrounded by animals, but I notice that animals find me, animal symbolism finds me. It shows up in my life over and over and over again. And when I was 25, my mom gifted me a psychic reading. So I'm just letting this dry a little bit. Um, my first psychic reading, I had no idea what to expect. And this woman was so, so lovely. She sat in a rocking chair and she rocked the whole time, but she kept asking me, I've got just a little uh, skewer here to maybe come in and just, if this is not too dry, to add a few more words in here. Um, if I had a career plan with animals, and at the time I was working on my master's in Latin American studies in the University of Texas in Austin, Texas at the Latin American Institute, and um, I said, no, you know, I've always loved animals, but she kept coming back to saying, <coughs> excuse me, that she saw me surrounded by animals, and it was such an interesting moment, and I've never had a career planned around animals, but what I discovered, and an animal deck was the very first deck of oracle cards that I ever discovered and was very drawn to. So animals have played a huge role in my own life, and so I'm always deeply drawn to animal symbolism. I pay careful attention when I see animals showing up either in person around me or 
just looking for my little Stabilo pencil here in person around me or in um, images, right? I might be flipping through books or see mentions of them, but I do, I pay attention. And so animals are my thing. Symbols might be your thing. Archetypal representations is, a, is another thing. So I'm gonna trace the outline of this horse and start to get the shape of the horse onto the, to the page. But so much of what happens in my personal art making practice is the noticing, right? Is the just noticing what's going on around me. And the art of noticing is such powerful magic for really sort of understanding what's happening in our life. And a lot of times images, imagery, symbols, colors that you're noticing over and over again. So these have messages for us. They create an opportunity to just explore or notice, you know, um, why am I seeing this over and over? Is there something here for me? All right, so I think I'm gonna add another color into the, the base of the horse. Do I wanna do that or do I just wanna start building up color? Let me think about this, that, this for a minute. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get the shape of my horse in here. I'm using a black Stabilo Marks All. This is a, a water soluble pencil. And I'm gonna go over it with some matte medium to make it permanent. I'm just trying to get that shape of the of the horse on here. Their eyes are funny. They're sort of, you know, way over on the, the side of their head. Not trying to make this perfect again right now. Just trying to get that shape down here. Maybe I will come in and add his mane. I loved the look on the face on the horse's face. But just learning to notice what's happening around us. There's usually a lot going on if we just slow down long enough to pay attention, if we slow down long enough to pay attention. So again, just trying to get some of these basic shape of the horse's face down on here. I'm not necessarily like I wouldn't consider myself the best at drawing and so I often look for you know how can I practice like just getting the the shape of the horse down there is just a way to to start and teaches me to see and so I can start to really notice like what's the shape of this line and even coming in and drawing over the horse right what are the shape of these lines? These look like little Paisleys and they're not even exactly even. What is this shape here? Noticing things are sort of rectangular and squared off. Noticing the, the difference in the, the shapes of the ears. So again, just letting, and I think his back is too big here. So I'm gonna bring this down and I've just kind of created this big blobby body, which is fine. Um, I'm not too concerned about making him perfect. Just trying to get, again, the shape of the horse on the page to represent the, the horse. He has this funny, long, narrow face. When I look at the picture, it doesn't look, you know, as, uh, as narrow as it does on here, right? And so I'm wondering what needs to change here. And actually that nose kind of definitely goes in a little bit there, out a little bit there. And you know I love coloring on the backs of these and creating my own tracing uh, graphite paper as well. But I think this is gonna just get us started on this horse and decide where do I wanna go with him? And again, when I'm working in my visual journal, so I've added my writing to the background, I've added just one color so far to the background. I'm thinking I want my horse to be kind of bold and colorful. So I'm gonna come in here and just start grabbing a few colors of paint. 
and seeing where we can go with our horse painting. So I've just grabbed, like I said, a few random colors of paint. And I'm curious, those that are watching live, good morning, thank you for being here. Is there a particular animal that either you love surrounding yourself with or one that you often see out in the, the wild or notice? I was on a, a call with some ladies the other day and, and someone was talking about different birds. My husband and I are definitely amateur bird watchers, so I think about birds and um, really notice hawks. I would say that hawk is one of my totem animals for sure, and so I'm often noticing hawks where others don't. And when we lived at the beach, I loved seeing the dolphins out in the, in the ocean and it would amaze me that people would be just walking down the beach, walking down the beach. And I'm going to use this to kind of pay attention to some of the lights and the darks as I start to add in some of my colors here. So we're going to use this red maybe for some of these darks and just noticing how the colors are going to show up on top of this blue and where I might need to come back and change that up a little bit. Maybe some red and I'm painting right over that stabilo. I opted not to put the matte medium but just to let it blend with the paint. And people wouldn't notice the dolphins. Like it was crazy to me that how could you be here in this, you know, space, just this majestic space and there's these incredible creatures, sea lions, seals, we saw all kinds of things. At the right time of year, we saw whales. It was an amazing gift to live so close to the ocean for a decade. Okay, let's just get some of this color down on here. And I think that the best gift we can give ourselves as artists and creatives is the art of noticing, the art of noticing. I think someone even wrote a book called The Art of Noticing. And so just um, as you're out and about in the world this week, be present and mindful to what's showing up. Are you noticing a particular plant? So depending on where you live, there's like Blanca in Los Angeles. There's lots of beautiful things blooming all year round. Marion and I are buried in snow, right? So, But I'm still present to what's going on around me when I'm outside in nature. Brad and I were out for a walk yesterday afternoon, and there was a beautiful, huge red-tailed hawk sitting on top of a light pole near our park just watching the fields. I'm sure he was or she was waiting, right? Waiting to see if anything moved out there that was worth chasing down. We have lots and lots of bunnies here. In fact, it's been uh, every time we go out the door, there have been uh, bunny tracks in the snow in front of our house. And the cats love watching the, the bunnies out their window. So again, this is going to be an abstract horse. I'm trying to capture the energy and the magic of horse. I love that Blanca. Dogs, cats, birds, weekends riding horses. And when we think about animals historically as myth and story, they appear in every culture, right? So um, different animals were important to different cultures. Horse was so important to Native Americans. All of a sudden it created the opportunity for them to, to travel and move much more broadly than they had before. Horses are incredibly loyal. The connection between a horse and its rider is something pretty, pretty magic. Horses love to run. They're playful. They're curious. Just letting these colors all kind of blend together might end up with 
a little bit of mud in here. I think I want some more, a little bit more dark down here. Definitely going to want to bring some white in and add to this. And in two weeks, I'm going to be leading my Mythical Makeover experience where we're going to be exploring archetypes and symbols in the story, The Secret Garden, which is one of my absolute favorite books from childhood. And I was that girl who always had my head buried in a book and I loved all the books, The Black Stallion, um, books about wild mustangs. Like I read all the books about horses, all the books about, you know, fantasy fiction, but Secret Garden was one of my favorites. And I had fun last week. I rewatched the old movie of The Secret Garden and started making some notes again about uh, some of the symbols and I found my old copy of the book that I've had since I was a kid, probably since the 70s, that had been, his jawline is not quite right here. And I can see why. So when I look at the image and I'm thinking, what's not quite right here? So this is his neck and this is his actual face. So I'm gonna need to come back in with some lines to distinguish this is the bend of his neck and this is the jawline of his face. And right now they kind of look like they're the, the same thing. So just noticing, I'm like, okay, this isn't quite right. So let's give him a little better shape to his face, which kind of comes up to the edge of his nose here. And then we can kind of smooth out the, the line of his neck, which actually goes way down here, but we want those to be a little bit different. So again, this is how we work. We just continue to play and evolve images and fuss with them. This one also needs to be just a little more straightened, straightened out. Again, not going for perfection, but I am going for that, you know, wanting to have him at least be a little bit realistic. And I'm having fun with where these colors are going. I've been enjoying exploring more bold painting styles like this in my journal. I've done a few on canvas. I wouldn't say that um, I really know what I'm doing, but I'm having a lot of fun experimenting. But during our three-day mythical makeover experience, we're going to be working with concepts related to inner child, to family, companionship, and there's definitely animals in that one. She finds the secret garden thanks to a little robin who guides her to the gate that has been buried for a long time. So we'll be playing with the image of a robin. And one of my favorite characters in the story is the young boy Dickon who speaks to the animals and understands the earth and shows her how to bring the, the garden back to life. Thank you, Blanca. Have a great day. All right, I need some white on here, and I'm thinking maybe some yellow to brighten this guy up as well. And start to bring in some details. And you know that I love creating pages in my visual journal that I can do in one sitting that don't necessarily take, you know, hours and hours and days and days. And when I'm working this way to just really capture the essence of something to not get caught up in perfection, because I'm here to think about the, the meaning of the horse, not to, to create some perfect representation of a horse, but just to get a little horse magic 
flowing in my journal. And I think he needs a little bit of a wild mane here. So that yellow is exactly what he needed and I think that white is going to make a difference as well. And again, just noticing where are some of the highlights, where are some of the shadows. This is, you know, under his chin, there's a lot of shadow here. It's much darker. I'm going to come back in and, you know, do some fine tuning on his eyes at the very end. But I know it's going to need some of this white to really sort of brighten things up. And I'm, I'm playing with this idea of how can I use patches of color to create the overall whole. It's a style that I've seen other people painting that I'm really drawn to the boldness of the colors. And um, there's a, a Colorado artist that paints in this very bold style and paints animals and I just um, admire it and I'm always curious about how can I take a style like that that's different and a stretch and really kind of just make it my own. Make it my own. I'm going to give his face a little bit more dimension here. And so your visual journal practice in addition to the meaning, <clears throat> excuse me, it can be a great place to really hone your skills, practice new techniques with just some paper and paint. We're not quite so caught up in perfection. Like when I find myself working on pieces like the one I showed at the beginning, I get a little more caught up, right? I get a little more caught up in Ooh, this one might be on display on a bookshelf or somewhere in my house. I want it to look good. And when I get um, too attached that way, it never comes out quite as nice maybe as I want it to, where something like this that's quick and fast and just a fun exploration creates a lot of freedom, creates a lot of freedom. It's important to change brushes when you're working in this style, creating different marks, creates variation in your painting. I noticed, I was noticing that all my strokes were looking the same. And so now I'm coming in with a smaller brush, which allows me to get into some of these nooks and crannies here as well. Maybe create some more outlines. I love horses in winter. They're so beautiful in the summer when they're all, actually the elk are this way too, and the deer. Good morning, Yvonne. When they're um, all slick and shiny, uh, they're beautiful, but in the winter, they're quite fuzzy, right? They're quite fuzzy. So I'm just continuing to look at my image, to look at some of the lights and darks, and just move some of this color around the page. And I remember one time, I don't know if I was in middle school, maybe high school, my mom and my stepdad used to take us on these awesome, wanting some of this red, I think it is main, uh, road trips every summer. And ever since my brother and I both are still very fond of road trips. And one year we drove all the way up the California coast, so from Texas, we left from Texas and drove across to the west coast up Highway 1. It was an amazing trip and we ended up in Seattle where my mom had a cousin who had racehorses or trained racehorses and we got to go to a racetrack. Didn't love the horse racing part, mostly because as a kid, it's pretty boring. There's a lot of, what you don't see on TV is there's a lot of downtime between races. She 
she definitely wants more of a kind of a wild mane here. I'll be bringing in that a little bit longer. And uh, I'll never forget getting to go behind the scenes to all the stalls and see all the beautiful, amazing horses and had this sweet connection with a sweet horse named Mariah, which means the wind. I don't even remember uh, what language, but means the wind. And that was, you know, decades ago. This week I'm turning 58 years old and, you know, so early high school, middle school, that was a, a long time ago, but I still remember, still remember that horse, that connection. So animals stick with me personally all the time. I must have four or five different decks of oracle cards and books on animal symbolism. Always something I've been drawn to. One of these days, I want to create my own deck of animal cards and animal symbolism. I'm noticing that the horse has this, you know, there's this sort of cheek here that comes in a little bit. So I'm going to just again, that is just that noticing, OK, where what's missing here and why is this not quite lining up like I want? So there's a little more dark in here. And I'm using a Stabilo Marks All pencil to just write over the top of everything, which is water soluble. So this is going to be darker in here. And I'm going to come back in and start to see if I can add a little more detail and realism to these eyes as well. It does have kind of some, you can see, just see the eyelids. But it's funny when you look at a horse straight on because its eyes really are on the side of its head. And he's got nice little fuzzy bits, you know, the ears sort of curl in, so we want to capture. So I'm using this Stabilo to come back and add some of those darks. I think I'm going to want to, in the picture you can't see the mane, but I'm thinking I'm going to want to have this nice flowing mane. Again, it's not perfect, but it's all about capturing the magic of the horse, what the horse means to me. Again, that idea that I'm sort of playing with a, a new style of bold painting that's those are kind of sticking out there more than I want them to. And we're going to come in and just continue that beautiful flowy mane over here. Definitely the smaller brush, noticing how I can use my brush strokes to sort of create the illusion of a mane. And a little too much. I think I'm not liking how this is coming, so I'm just going to paint over it. It may take me a couple of tries. I may need to let that dry a little bit and then We'll come back and smooth that out a little bit because that paint underneath there was still wet. Maybe I'm just going to bring a little bit of this blue from the background back into the horse as well. And kind of let it mix with that black in there. So yesterday I was teaching during the day my radiant retreat, my radiant retreat. So it's, I know it's kind of glary, 
and um, this is the second time that I taught it. So I'm just noticing his face still isn't feeling quite right, so I'm going to think about what I want to do with that while it gets dry. But I was teaching my Radiant Retreat, and one of my dear friends was there, and she messaged me afterwards. And she said that she'd had a big breakthrough in her own creative process. She always says that she wants to create more, but then she makes excuses or she thinks it's too hard to get set up and get the materials out. And so she ends up just sort of making it harder than it needs to be. And I hear this over and over again. I feel really, really lucky that I have a lot of space. I know for sure that my personal art practice changed and became so much more consistent and active when I had a dedicated space. It needs to go a little more straight down here, I think. That's feeling better. And so it can be hard when you don't have a dedicated space for making art and it does feel like a, a chore. So like another friend that was there yesterday had converted her dining room table into uh, an art space for the day. But she was gonna have to clean all that up where I have the, the, the luxury to just be able to, to just walk away. And there's definitely a gift in that. So what do you do when you don't have a dedicated space in your house for art making? And you know that this is one of the things that's sort of stopping you from creating more. So one of the simplest things to do is to create project boxes. So I used to do this a lot when um, my kids were younger. And in fact, I, I still sort of do it even if it's, okay, this eye is too big. So that's what I'm noticing. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So I'm talking and creating and I'm just noticing that I want to bring the corner of that one in a little bit more. I'm just cleaning that up a little bit. Um, is create project boxes. So like I have collage boxes, I have Zen Tingle boxes. So even though I have now this luxury of space, I still keep things in boxes where it's easy to pull out a box at a time. I have project boxes for upstairs. I can't paint on the couch. I try to keep, you know, messy art supplies in the studio. And yet, you know, I want to keep creating and I often will sit in front of the TV with my hubby in the evenings and either work on one of my sacred circle designs or do some Zen tangle. Okay, those are looking a little bit better. So I have colored pencils and markers, things that aren't too messy, or I will sit in front of the TV and prep images for collage. So I have things that, you know, I do in different parts of the house. But even in the studio, this idea of how can I organize things so that it's easy to sit down and create? It's easy to sit down and create, and I don't have to think about it. Because it's when we start to, to think about the, the work that's involved is we can get really hung up on, this is going to take too much effort. This is going to take too much effort. And we don't want that, right? We don't want that. We want it to be easy. So create project boxes. So one might have a journal and half a dozen colors of paint and a couple of brushes and maybe some collage images. So just noticing where we can make things simple for ourselves can help us get over that hump of feeling stuck. And even when we have studio space, 
and we're surrounded by all the supplies, because if you're like me, you're a collector of supplies, right? And if you're a collector, it can be hard to know where do I start, right? You can get overwhelmed with, I don't know what to create today, or do I do watercolors, do I do acrylic, or, you know, do I want to make the effort to get my gel press out, you know, so we have all these questions running through our head all the time. So the way to get beyond that, again, is to organize things in such a way that it makes choosing simpler. It makes choosing simpler. Okay, I'm just getting fussy with this guy at this point, figuring out wanting his little more symmetry in his face, even though in the photo, that symmetry isn't necessarily there. I'm looking for what, what's gonna be pleasing to my eye to sort of capture the, the face of that horse. And that's feeling just a little bit better there. Again, it's not so much about realism as what's pleasing to, to the eye, capturing the sort of essence of horse. Noticing when energetically all of a sudden I'm moving into a little bit of being caught up in some perfection here. I do kind of like that, just a little bit of black outline there and what if I just made his mane go all the way down here so it felt like he has this or she I'm not really sure horses that have those long beautiful flowy manes like when I look on my Instagram or my Facebook videos they're often showing me videos of gorgeous horses running so he's coming together here so again not not perfect but i kind of like again this bold painting it's a different style for me and it's a great experimentation and as we go forward this week through different animal paintings i'll be exploring different styles of how i might get the shape onto the page exploring different styles of painting them as well. So there was something about this feather that really wanted to be on the page, but I'm thinking maybe it's too, it's too big. So um, maybe it's just the essence of feather. Feathers for me are all about the, the lightness of being, flight and movement, which is often what the horse means as well. So sometimes we have an idea and we get to you know the next stage and we're like nope that's not quite right so trust that right trust that that means that the feather wants to be somewhere but maybe not on this particular image all right so i'm trying to decide where i want to go with his little eyeballs here so horse's eyes are very dark gonna stick with the with the red which is making me laugh and so I think maybe I'm not gonna stick with the red I'm actually gonna come in with some black so if you've ever flown into the Denver Airport the Denver Broncos football team their mascot is um, this big blue horse and there is a crazy sculpture of it at the Denver airport and it has these like double red eyes and it looks like this devil horse and it makes us laugh every time every time that we see it um, and I'm, so I'm looking at those red eyes going you no know, I really don't want something devilish so what else could we come in there so let's add a new color and get a little bit darker color in those eyes because he's looking a little too devilish this morning This is going to make me a lot happier. So it's okay if I've got some of that red in there. 
And because that red paint is wet, I might need to uh, do a couple of coats there. So that's feeling a little bit better. So let me bring some of this. Remember whenever you add a new color to something you're working on, you want to add that color in a few different pieces, places around your design. That's what helps make your piece feel whole and complete. A lot more symmetry there. That's better. Now it doesn't look like the crazy red devil horse at the at the airport. So that makes me not laugh so much at my horse. So I'm going to hit this with my dryer and then I'm going to come in with a, a white gel pen and just add a, a little bit of detail. Actually, before I do that, I think I got these sides over here maybe a little bit too dark. So let's bring that red back. And I've kind of lost my lavender too, so maybe I can come back in with just a little bit. I don't want him to end up being all red, so just noticing where can I make sure I'm keeping those bold colors going. A fun experiment for sure to paint in this bold colorful style. One of the places I've noticed where I get really stuck in my art is with adding white. I always know what a huge difference it makes in the final piece and yet there's something about adding those really bold bits of white that kind of just um, they make me nervous somehow and so I often have to check myself and get back stand back hold this out at a distance and just notice it's like okay where would this benefit from having some light added to it where would this benefit from having some light added to it where am I being tentative in my bold strokes and I often end up adding it and then painting it away, right? And painting it away. So I'm gonna just leave those white strokes on there for the moment. Still looking at this, you know, shape of the face and I'm noticing this needs to be connected here. Again, his horses have long, narrow faces but they're not separate from some of the other parts of them and so you know it can be tricky to to capture the the wholeness of the face in those different lines so i can feel myself getting caught up in wanting this to be perfect and it's definitely not perfect which means it's it's time to stop and to step away a little bit Let's add, so if we imagine where that light is coming from, forcing myself to just add that little bit of white, be a little bit of bold with that. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer, so I'm going to mute myself for just a minute. I want that paint to be really dry before I 
go over it with any kind of pen or paint marker so that I don't ruin the tips of this. And as I was just sitting here looking at it and drying, noticing that this horse feels very powerful and that, so there's a symbol of power, he, power here that feels very meaningful and so maybe the word powerful is going to get written somewhere on the page. I haven't even thought about what I want to do to the background and I'm not sure I want to do anything. I love that I can still see some of the lines of writing down the page and it's always interesting looking at what I can see in the camera versus what I can see looking down the page and what I'm noticing in the camera is that his cheek line over here is a little too broad but also that I've kind of that dark I've lost the other side of his nose here so we'll see if this I have so many gel pens some of them are definitely well used this one's just about out of ink so noticing on his eyes how much light there is, right? How much light there is. There's a lot of light here, but in his eyes, there's a lot of light. So I'm going to come in and just use this gel pen to create some of these lines to start. And it might mean going back again with some paint. One of the things that I love about horses is they have beautiful eyelashes, right, that make them just seem even more gentle, noticing just where that light is. And then all of a sudden that horse really starts to come to life just by simply coming in and adding some detail to that face here. And it also gives me some better lines for coming in around the edge of the face. So again, not perfect. The proportions still aren't quite right, but I've definitely captured the magic of the horse here on this page. And he's making me pretty happy still thinking that I've gotten the side of his face too wide and I can actually go back to that initial drawing that I did and look how this has gotten way broader than my initial outline when I was tracing around the edge of the horse. So I'm going to see if I can fix that up a little bit with some of my blue here. And so it's interesting, again, we're talking today a lot about the art of noticing, noticing animals, symbols, colors that are showing up, but also part of learning to draw is learning to notice shapes, right? Learning to notice shapes. So I noticed that his ears got bigger, his eyes got bigger. So what I'm seeing on the page is varying dramatically from what I saw in the image. And I can take creative license and create what I want, but also it's important to go back again and to, to look at the look at the shapes, right? So, you know, here's the, it's hard to see, it wasn't a great image, but here's the shape of his face in the photo, right? And we did this one and there's, you know, so I can also see where my eye wants to make all of this bigger and broader. And so now I can just spend a little time correcting what my eye was seeing and see. So I added a lot of extra mane over here. And I'll probably take a couple of layers to fix some of this up and I'll probably I know I'm going to need to let this dry for a while and step away from it, right? It's so easy to want to just sit here all day long and really fuss with it, but all of a sudden his face is coming a little bit more into focus and rather than making this look like part of his body, it really just needs some wispy bits to look like he's got that kind of crazy mane. And 
And what I love about working with acrylics is that everything is paint overable, right? Like there's just, it's so easy to go back in here and add some of these corrections. So again, as always, my personal creative practice is starting with journaling, adding color to the background. This time I went with one solid color. The horse is so colorful himself that I definitely did not need to add anything else to the background. It would make this piece feel a little bit too busy. And now I'm just doing a little bit of fine tuning working with acrylic paints a stabilo marks all pencil and working from this image and trying to not get myself caught in perfectionism and being fussy with the page being fussy with the page. I do want to see the side of his face here and here. And maybe add some of those sweet little eyelashes on there. And let go of the rest. So the last touch is just to bring in some of those wispy bits of the mane and that's going to mix with the blue and that's okay. And I'm going to call him done. It would be easy to just sit here and futz with this for the rest of the day, his face is not quite right, and I'm okay with that, right? I'm okay with that. I haven't quite gotten the shape right. This edge of this eye isn't quite right. But if I let myself get stuck there, it takes me out of the playfulness and the energy and the magic of just being here a little bit, exploring a new style, exploring horse magic, and remembering some of those stories about why horses matter to me. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me and my inner critic today. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. I am here most Mondays to Thursdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time to talk about visual journaling, art as creative process, and anything else that might be on my mind that day. I will see you all soon. Hope you had some fun creating along with me today and um, thinking about the animals that matter to you. Thanks so much for joining me.